Hi and welcome to episode 11 of Every Semicolon. Um, so this episode probably going to be fairly short. Uh, I'm planning on doing a couple of episodes uh, tonight and, um, and some tomorrow as well. Um, Shane's done up some dwarf uh, graphics, uh, a model and, and some basic uh, animation I believe. Um, just some low res textures and that sort of thing so at this stage we're still not entirely sure of the platform and 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 the requirements for the model so uh, he's done a fairly um, low poly relatively um, and low res uh, textures so this might this might actually be the fi final high res sort of uh, standard of the uh, of the dwarf model or it may be um, might end up being you know, a, a medium sort of uh, LOD level. Um, let's drag in these textures. And I'll drag in the FBX assets. So, I had a quick look at these earlier. Um, so what he's done is he's broken them up into separate, separate pieces. So we have the dwarf um, and then the different uh, elements of the dwarf, so these can be then swapped out with variations of you know different gauntlets, uh, different beards, um, different hair and helmets. So we can get you know variation on on similar dwarves and and you know obviously we could do things like change textures and that sort of thing, have different coloured um, different coloured clothes and 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 hair and, and that sort of thing as well. So um, it's kind of cool, a, a modular sort of design for the characters. So first thing I'll do is I'll just grab all these and set the scale factor to 1 and apply that. Uh, so what I was thinking of doing, and, and he's giving me a little text file here which will tell me the frames of the uh, animations. So there's an idle, a, a one, idle 1, so the idea being there will be multiple idle animations and, and a sitting idle. So let's go to the dwarf here and we'll set up those split animations. We'll hit the plus button there to create a couple of uh, animation clips. I'm going to call it idle sitting just so that it's um, organized uh, by the prefix idle if I was to fill them in an alphabetical order. So 1 to 80 and 82 to 160. I haven't actually looked at these yet. Uh, so I'm not sure if these are correct. But We'll see how that goes. Alright, so <clears throat> straight off the bat, I think I know what I'm gonna do this episode. Um let's let's drop in whoop, that's not the button. Uh drop in a new game object called dwarf, and this is gonna be the basis of our, our prefab object. And on that I'll drop in this dwarf graphic. So I'll also do my uh what's the uh Shortcut we've set up. Game up. Uh, utils game object. Uh, child object. Shift Alt N. Sort of graphics node. All right. Where did our dwarf go? Dwarf has zero scale for some reason. Oh, that's interesting. I never noticed that before. Okay, so Shift Alt N, my uh, fancy little shortcut, is creating objects with a scale of zero. That's no good. We want his utils uh, objects. Okay. Aha! Yeah, I think this is the first video I've, since I've fixed it. Um, it definitely was a, a shortcut related to the recording, so that, that theory was right. So now I don't have to be frustrated by the lack of shortcuts to do this. So that's cool. Um, one, one problem out of the way. And you can see here I am being stupid and setting local scale to zero. That's stupid. Okay, scale of 1111. Our dwarf, it'll just reset him. Okay. You can see here, little uh, dwarf man, fairly 
uh, low poly, low res textures, but he's 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 looking okay. Without his stuff, he looks a bit strange though. Um, so we'll start throwing on his other elements. All right. So there's our dwarf with bits and pieces. Now, what I'm going to do this episode <coughs> is set this dwarf up to animate now with all his module bit modular bits animating. So what what some people might think to do um, to make you know each of these a separate element with their own animations, their own skinning information, um, and and what some people might think is maybe a good idea is to uh, animate all of them at the same time. Just play all the animation on all these different bits, and then they'll be in sync, and it'll look right. Uh, that's not a good idea because what that'll do is then we have these six different models all running animation all performing skinning well okay let's be fair it's not going to be that the skinning's going to happen on the all no matter what um, but you're going to be playing that animation multiple times six different times moving six different sets of bones and and then you know it's 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 not necessary it's it's too much it's it's slow but yeah you know, it's okay it's not that big of a difference but what I'm going to do instead, which is also much more easy, you know, much more easily managed, is I'm going to go. I want these five guys to. Uh, I just want to get rid of all these animation components and that sort of thing. Um, I don't really want all these bones, but I might just leave them anyway because it's not really they're just going to be um, ignored. What I'm going to do is go to this skin mesh renderer and uh, set all his bones to. Uh, this dwarf's bones. I've just noticed here a root bone. Is this a... How long has that been around? Root bone. Let's have a look at that for a sec in the uh, scripting reference. Strange. It's not in the scripting reference. It's gonna be, it won't be in the history, I guess, since it's not. Okay. Um, it seems like that might actually do what we want. I was going to write a script to basically go through all the bones on on these guys and instead uh, set the bones to the ones from, from this object but this this root bone here might allow us to do that in another way so Right. Just looking at I'm uh, just looking at some stuff here, just googled for it. Okay. That's interesting. I actually uh, yeah, I've never seen that before. I used it. Uh so it's saying bone, bone spine 3 this dwarf body bone pelvis right so let's go do let's just do a test I guess might be the easiest way to do this um, if I uh, was to play it You know, seeing the other guy animating. 
You see all these bits and pieces are uh, playing a different animation. Um, go to the beard and set the beard's root bone to spine 3. Play that. Yeah, okay, so you can see that besides the fact that the beard was playing an animation. Um, that sort of seems to work, possibly. Maybe not. It actually probably didn't tell me anything. If I get it back to the beard and turn off the animation, is it... A beard static. Alright, it's anyway, you can't access it from code. It's not something I want to use. Anyway, so since uh, yeah, basically since I can't access this root bone from code, I don't really want to use it at all. Um, no, might seem a bit strange, but if you if you want to, you know, you've seen in previous videos um, how I like to automate some processes and that sort of thing, and, and, and scripts and write utility functions to do a lot of stuff for me. Uh, if I can't do it in code. I don't want to do things manually, I don't want to have to worry about that sort of thing. Uh, it looked like there's been some people asking about it on the forums and, and possibly no, no solution, um, but yeah, that, that's to me not true, maybe there is a solution. Long story short, I don't actually need to uh, worry about that, because instead I'm going to write code that will do everything I want for me and you know, probably do all that and more. Um, what basically I'm going to do is go in here and uh, gauntlet an extra L. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to put a component probably just straight on the dwarf or on the graphics. Uh, <coughs> probably dwarf. And what it'll do is it will tell me, I'll, I'll say these five objects here, go through, find their skin mesh renderers, and set, uh, run through all their bones, find the bones um, with the same name under this dwarf game object and set the bones to the new bones um, so basically the end result will be that these these uh, skin mesh renderers underneath objects like dwarf beard so this dwarf beard here uh, will be skinned against the bones under dwarf and that way I can play an animation on the dwarf object and play it once and have all the different elements um, animate accordingly so I probably won't talk too much about that while I'm doing it. I'm going to try and uh, just write this code pretty quick. Um, I'm looking for a uh, pretty quick episode, so let's figure out where to put this first. Let's make a script called, a folder called animation. And let's call it, uh, we'll make this one something that happens at runtime. Um, we'll call it. Uh, Uh, reass reassign reassign bones. All right. For some reason that didn't name our script. Okay, so I want to give it a couple of public variables. One being, um, what if it's a transform? Called new root. Uh, reassign SMRs. Oh, we'll just call it reassign objects. Okay. So, still uh, seems to be getting more feedback, more uh, people checking out these videos. So that that that's cool. I'm having having uh, a lot of fun doing them, and at the moment a bit busy on on some other stuff, and it's giving me a bit of a it's a bit annoying really because I can't spend as much time as I'd like to on on this stuff. But I'm going to try and do a lot of videos in the next 
a couple of days. Um, it is a, a holiday here tomorrow in Australia, so um, that'll be cool. Uh, not really sure where we're going to be with artwork on a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, we're starting to get there. We're starting to, we're starting to get, you know, probably enough to to really start putting the game together. I think I'm going to have to start looking at things like, you know, just turning this into a bit of a game, getting some GUI elements going. Um, you know, there's still some other lots of little things I can do here and there. I need to um, set up these these ropes here and and on the castle stuff. You know, there's all sorts of things to do in terms of maybe setting up this staggering formation in a way that's that's more easily done. Um, yeah, that's that's all going to be cool. Uh, actually, tomorrow I will be watching. Going to go see the Avengers and stuff like that tomorrow, so I probably won't be able to do as much as I wanted. But actually, I, I, yeah, I still have plenty of time tomorrow to uh, to do videos. So, but uh, the Avengers should be pretty cool. So that's exciting. All right, so this is going to run through. Um, oops. Resign bones length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through all the bones, get the skinned mesh, not bones, sorry, all the objects, and get a get an array of all the skinned mesh renderers. Oh. Underneath the objects, the components in children. Wow. Uh, then I'm going to run through each skin mesh renderer. Um. And I'll run a script called a method called uh, resign bones to new root, giving it the skinned mesh renderer, and the new root. Of course, something different, just so it's not the same as my uh, public variable up here. Um, Oh, uh, we've got new uh, new skeleton right up here. Okay. All right. So that's all that's going to need to do. Now we need our resign bones to roots skin. Oh, okay. I should <laughs> okay. That. That and new root. All right. So what this is going to do is get all the old bones out of the skin mesh renderer. Skin mesh renderer. Dot bones. Yep. Okay. So that returns a transform array of all the bones that the the animation is pointing to. So Quick overview if you if you're not um, if you don't really know too much about this sort of thing uh, animations in Unity <coughs> how it works is essentially we'll go to our dwarf man here and you see that all the bones from the the 3D modeling program come in just uh, as empty transforms positions and and rotations of those bones as they were in in Max or Maya or whatever program Blender etc. <clears throat> um, and what happens is there's an animation um, either created in Unity using you know, scripts or, or the uh, animation window and and the animation you know or yeah and all from Maximire um, the animation as animations do will move the bones move uh, and then rotate them and or scale scale the bones so just change the transforms of the bones so you can see here uh, go along you can you can actually this window will show um, whatever bone is selected say if I go to 
uh, the head bone moves sort of back and forward a little bit so we should be able to see the middle of the head spine 3 can't really tell what's uh, what's moving and basically you can see the um, the curves of the animation here and here you can see uh, pelvis moves in this animation you can see as I've moved the timeline along uh, those values changing and there'll be a line here uh, which this curve here will have some very minute changes um, so basically what's happening is the animation moves the bones and then and these bones being transformed and I can, you can also move those in, in script um, in, in late update after the animations run you can move bones for sort of procedural animation that sort of thing uh, and a skinned mesh in this case this guy here has a skinned mesh renderer um, each of these vertices in the mesh is weighted to a bone um, weighted to up to up to four bones or two bones or one bone depending on your settings uh, and as that bone moves they say uh, this hand bone if there's a hand bone here um, if this all these verts are weighted 100 percent to that one bone uh, it, they will move one to one with that bone if 50 percent they'll be worth move you know halfway, you know, 50% of the amount that that bone moves and 50% of another another bone and that sort of thing uh, and that's how animation works and skinning works um, so yeah, the, the vertices themselves aren't animated, just the just the uh, bones and then they're skinned to bones a certain amount so when I go transform array old bones equals skin mesh renderer dot bones uh, that's getting all the transforms that the skin mesh renderer is um, skinned to so these are the old bones um, and now we want to get the or we'll make an empty array for the new bones and at the end of this method we're going to assign uh, skin mesh renderer up bones to the new new array of bones so it's going to be the same as old bones length and, and we're going to run through uh, old bones um, so the new bone uh, by default we'll set it to old bone if we can't find a bone of the same name in underneath the new root then we'll just leave it as the old bone uh, let's make another method to do this um, because Unity does have a find child pool. We'll make it recursive, so. We'll make it recur yeah. So uh, I'll call it find deep child. Um, yeah, I've made a couple of methods. I do this quite a lot. And I don't know if this is based on things that, that used to be in Unity and aren't anymore, or. or actually, I think, I think it's still the case. We'll have a quick look at the uh, scripting reference to point out what I'm trying to talk about um, and the transform we've got uh, like find and there's also find child I believe they both do the same thing I believe yeah so find child find uh, returns we'll find uh, it doesn't do a deep search, it just if I search for bone underscore L dash leg one um, as a, f a find for bone underscore base, it wouldn't find it it would only find bone underscore pelvis if I search for that, it doesn't do a deep search, it doesn't do a, you know, keep going down the hierarchy, recurse down the hierarchy, it just does one one level and I believe find child is the same, there might be something I'm missing and, and that that's fine, um, but uh, what I'm going to do for now, just rather than, than look into it too much, is write my own method to do it. So, um, yeah. So <coughs> what I've done here is set up a a method to return true or false for whether whether or not it finds it, and and also um, return uh, output 
the found child. So this is going to be a recursive um, method. I think it's, I'm going to set this to null. And uh, what I'll do is um, I'm going to check one transform. So I'll check one transform in this method. And what it's going to do is, if, it, if it's that, then it sets it to uh, um, check transform, it returns true. Uh, if it doesn't find it, which I'm going to return at this point, so I'll just go bam. What I'm going to do is, uh, let's do check transform dot child count, yep. Um, now, say so if find deep child check transform uh, child i child name out found child now uh, yeah I try to struggle with um, how much to talk about what I'm doing when I'm coding because I've had some people say you know well, no, I haven't really had anyone say it's boring or anything watching watching the code. I've, actually, some people say it's a bit painful. Um, maybe because I'm not explaining enough, actually. Uh, some people like this as a way of, of learning to code because they get to see a lot more than, than in a typical tutorial video. And, and that's obviously one of the big benefits of doing this uh, long form um, you know, show everything video. So let me quickly just go over this uh, recursive method because I don't know if I've done a recursive uh, function yet in, in this. Uh, project, so it might be a good way of just showing sort of how it works. This isn't maybe the best um, format for one, but no errors. It looks like it'll probably work. Um, yeah. So what it does is you send in. So I'll, actually, I'll, let me finish this up and, and, and call it how I want to call it. Find deep child. Uh, gonna have to. Oops. Yeah, so I can pass a new bone, new, new, new root, um, and the name of the old bone, um, and yeah, output new bone. Uh, I don't want to be doing null so much, it's actually but null. Set it back to. I'll talk about this in a sec. Yep. Okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm saying going through this skin mesh renderer, grabbing all the bones out of it, and then I'm running through all those bones, and then I'm going to find a bone of the same name underneath this other game object. So the transform. So I pass in the transform, I pass in the name, and I give it a a variable here to output the value to. So if it finds it, I then assign that value into my new bones array, otherwise put the old bone into it. <coughs> and then at the end, once I've gone through all the bones, I set my bones array for the skin mesh renderer to the new bones, which you, the hope is that it's found found all the bones of the same names on this new under this new root and, and now it's pointing to all those. Um, so what happens when I go into find deep child, it will return true in these couple of cases, so it's a recursive algorithm that uh, requires it to come all the way back out actually of, of how far I recurse, so what I'm doing is I'm coming in and saying uh, found child equals null, it's just you need to set, you need to set an out variable um, all the time, so check transform dot name equals child name, so if the variable, so if I send in new bone or new root straight up and, it, and it's actually the name of the bone it will go found child equals it will set this to check transform and return true. It will come straight out and, and I'll set that to new root. Um, but that's not going to be the case. What it, instead it's going to do is come down into here and run through all the children under new root um, and go if found each child, find each child, run this again 
with that child of new root um, and then it'll come in and do all this again and if that child is that it will turn true at this point I'll say okay it was uh, it was um, true so I'm going to return out now and then it'll come up here and it'll be the first child of new root so it'll just keep going through the, every child of new root and every child of every child of every child if <laughs> it's a recursive algorithm so it'll start um, basically the way it'll go is it'll go into uh, if we go into bone when bone pelvis it wouldn't go this one this one this one it'll go bone pelvis then bone leg one and it'll go through like that and it'll go this one then it'll go this one this one uh, that one that one and so forth so until it's gone through the entire hierarchy and either found or not found the uh, object with the same name okay so I think that's probably gonna work let's have a look New root does not exist, blah blah blah. It's because I spelt it wrong. Didn't spell it wrong, but I changed the name of it after the fact. Okay, Dwarf Man. Let's do this. We want to chuck reass oh, reassign bones onto the dwarf. New skeleton root, be that one. Doesn't actually have to be a bone or you know the, the topmost bone, just an object above the topmost bone. Um, what we're going to do is I'll lock the inspector so that I can click on other objects without the inspector changing. That way I can select these five guys and throw them into this array. Unlock the inspector. Let's have a look. Okay. Save that. And hit play. Now what I expect to happen is errors. Alright, so our code did not work first time. Let's have a look. Skin mesh renderers I, that's supposed to be skin mesh renderers J. Okay, that is working a treat. The animation frames don't seem to be right, there's a bit of a jump. Uh, I'm not going to bother investigating that myself. What I'll do is get, get Shane to have a look at that um, and, and, and fix up whatever's going wrong there. It looks like he's starting probably the sit animation. Let's switch over to the sit. Uh, dwarf man. Let's play that one instead. See what that looks like. So if he's looping he's probably gonna... Yeah, see it looks like it's probably just uh... Yeah, these frames probably aren't quite right. But, all our modular bits are now connected to the right bones and they're skinned fine, so that's that's excellent. So, it's pretty small, I'm not sure about the scale of them, uh, how it's all going to work out. That might actually be pretty decent. Um, let's have a look at how he compares to, uh, I'll switch him back to that. And let's make this guy a prefab man. Game prefabs characters. Okay, dwarf. And we're probably going to have variations of the dwarf, but I might also um, write a script to vary the dwarves um, at runtime. Give them a whole bunch of modular bits in a component that it can then instantiate at runtime, and, and that way they can be randomized uh, without multiple different prefabs and things to maintain. I just go, I want dwarf, 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 dwarf just sort of references to, to the prefab or just yeah, drop the prefab in around the place and then uh, you can randomize them uh, in a random sort of way. Uh, that might be pretty cool for the animation I think. Get him really look like he's working on that thing, you know, really working hard. It's bigger than he is, he's a big tough man though so it's all good. Dwarves are pretty tough guys. Drop it there, spin him around. Yeah. Couple of guys working on that. Another one going over here, maybe having a look at what's going on over there. Uh, this guy's having a look at things from this perspective. Yeah, he might have a 
couple more guys around depending on uh, how we feel. Um, so fairly fairly low poly dudes. Um, should be should be able to run fine on probably most devices, mobile devices and that sort of thing. Uh, from the range we're going to look at them from, you know, they they look they look great. Uh, very low rate. So this is a I think it's a pretty good um, example of, of low poly modeling. Um, yeah, you know, just got this uh, single sided thing here, and uh, what we can, you know, if you look at these textures, they're going to be, yeah, you know, that's that's 256 by 256, and then the hair is 128, uh, face is 128, you know, and there's plenty, plenty more detail that can be packed into there still, uh, and, the, and the helmet 128, so overall, you know pretty pretty uh, low low memory stuff and then the you know, fairly low poly sort of uh, geometry here so that's that's I mean that's not that that could be actually yeah that's that's pretty that's pretty good yeah we get a pretty decent shape um, we might not know what kind of variations we'll have on these guys uh, but it's all modular you know and again it could be one step further. Um, what we can do is actually pull the pull the body out of it and just have a separate skeleton object, which we then put the body, um, you know, skin the body to. So what we we can actually modularize uh, this to another level, um, swapping out the shape of of his body and arms and legs um, for another variation or another variation along with the head and, and, and all that sort of thing. But it depends on how, how well these bits go together, if you can actually Yeah, if this beard can go with another set of body or not, maybe you have to have a few different prefabs, you know, fat dwarf, you know, different different levels of dwarf with their own modular bits and pieces. Um anyway, that's that's a fairly short episode thus far. Pretty happy with how that went. Um so what I could also do is at that point delete out all these bones I've wanted to at runtime because we don't need those anymore. Uh, I don't think I'll worry about that. That seems a bit overkill. They're not really hurting anything at that point unless there's some sort of memory issues, which is more of an optimization for later on in development. Okay, let's let's give it a go. Let's see what happens if I run that up. Come over here, and now I've got these dwarves on my side. I'm pretty sure. I will destroy everything. Full power. Probably need to change that center of mass. It was a bit, a bit over the top how far I put it forward, and you know I tried to justify it afterwards in that episode by saying that yeah you know it sort of looks like it's sticking into things, but nah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much just uh, wrong. Where is that at? Ballista bowl. Yeah. Well, let's shift that back a bit. Center of mass. Still keep it fairly far forward, and I don't want it to do anything too strange, but. Yeah, about there. We'll give that a go. Apply that. Alright, um, what time is it? Still probably have a bit of time to work with here. Yep. Yeah, okay, I might start doing something else while I'm while I'm at it. Uh what can I do now? I should have a list somewhere, but I don't have it with me right now, so I'll have to Okay, I wanna start thinking about these ropes. Do I want to generate? I probably don't have time to write all that stuff now. Generating a cylinder, not a big deal. That might be the way to go. Or I can I can stretch another asset. Problem with yeah, I mean generating a cylinder is fine. But 
I then need to make sure it's UV mapped fine, which is also not a big deal, but depends on you know how you want it to look. I don't have the textures yet, I'm not really sure what that asset's going to be like. And there's not really that much benefit in me generating it because it's going to be, I believe, a straight, a straight cylinder. When it's pulled all the way back, it's always going to be tight. When it's uh, up here, before it's pulled back, would it be tight or not? I probably need to look up some stuff on ballistas and uh, just get a better idea of what that would actually look like and how that stuff works. If there's any sort of elasticity to the, to the thing, I don't think so. I think the whole point is that it's a rigid rope and therefore these uh, arms get pulled back. Okay, what else can I do? Let's have a look at this guy. What else does he need? We could make him... He doesn't have any locomotion related animations at the moment, no walking and that sort of thing, so nothing much I can do there. Uh, we could make a uh, little script to control him, just his animations and that sort of thing, so Let's go to we got gameplay. Let's chuck in a folder for characters. We'll call it um, actor. All right. Okay, I often, yeah, I typically use uh, strings for animation references. Um, the reason for that is that uh, the way Unity handles references is if I was to reference a, um, animation uh, clip, you can see here it's a child of the dwarf FBX. Now what would happen is if the Dwarf FBX had more animations added to it, um, more objects and stuff, that would shift around in the hierarchy, shift in the order of animations, and my reference would actually break. So by referencing it by, by name, then that, that's not going to happen. Because I know that things are definitely going to be added to this, and I don't want to have to deal with broken references. So Name is a little bit more difficult, because then you have to type it in, um, if I did a custom inspector, I could I could handle that another way, and I'd be to drag my uh, drag the clip in and have it then grab the name out of it. And I might I might even do that because hey, I've got I think I've got time. So what I'm going to do is idle animations and and avoid update. Um, public uh, victory. Um, idle animation uh, range. Uh, basically, thinking here is uh, so between five and fifteen seconds, he'll change his idle animation. Basically, is what, what I'm thinking there. Okay, I want to put in a private variable called time time until uh, idle change equals zero subtract delta time and when that is less than or equal to zero I'm going to set oh, I need the okay let's grab animation plan we're going to be using I want to make sure the animation component is always there
Okay. Uh, so if I don't have the animation component, I'm going to log out an error and uh, disable the component. Animation component dot um, crossfade to idle animations uh, random dot range um, zero to idle animations dot length. Uh, I think I mentioned this previously that um, the the random range for ints that's an exclusive um, max. So I can put in length in even though um, you know length goes for you know, if I put in two animations that's what I'm going to do. Length will be two and the, the second element I'm only interested in, in zero and one elements of the array, two is not an element of the array. Um, it's exclusive so two isn't used, it actually just does zero to one um, versus the float which is inclusive. Um, so in this case I can go random dot range idle animation range dot x to idle animation range dot y and 15 is actually a possibility as is 5 um, but because it's a float, 15 can be returned because that's a uh, it's a float, and that's how random range works. That's an inclusive max, and um, that one is an exclusive max. Okay, so when it's uh, below zero or equal to zero, a crossfade to a, a another idle animation or the same idle animation. Ugh, I don't really want to do that, do I? Um, and uh, and then I set it to change in a, a random amount of time between including those two numbers. Um, I don't want to do this if I have more than two um, more than one uh, idle animation and uh, okay so now I can safely go If animation component dot uh, the new idle animation. So what I'm doing is creating a string new idle animation and I'm setting it to a random one and then I'm going to keep doing that while the animation component is actually playing that, that idle animation. Um, what that means is you know, if, it, if it finds the same one it'll say no it's already playing that one try again try again try again try again until it gets it and then it will crossfade to that one. Um, now there is a possibility that it'll get it multiple times in a row obviously that's not really ideal um, and, and for when I've got these two animations there would be a much faster way probably of me doing it in terms of just storing you know knowing which index I'm, I'm playing now and, and then play another one but the the you know, I, I believe we'll have more idle animations so <clears throat> this is just an easier way of of handling any arbitrary number of animations um, okay dwarf select my prefab 
drop my prefab in, reset his position that I should have done in the first place. Uh, okay, I can't really see him there, so that's not a big deal. I might delete this block because it's just in the way. That's a cooler design anyway. Um, Dwarf Man needs a new active component. I chuck on that component. Idle animation, size of 2. Uh, I won't bother with the custom inspector for now. I want this to be a sub one hour episode. Um, Although I appreciate that it's probably people who are starting to get into this stuff and uh, you know I know that with a with, uh, lot of things that I look at or watch um, especially this sort of thing or, you know, there's nothing like this that I've seen but stuff like uh, Wolfire's weekly um, uh, alpha updates uh, I, I really look forward to those and I'll check Wolfire you know a couple of times a day a couple of days leading up to the actual um, release of those videos and then they're quite short and then it's just like well that's that was that one that was that for you know that was say that guy started sitting down is that going to be yeah okay so let's have a look okay how is that the case let's think about this for a sec the dwarf man by default plays idle one. Okay. Okay. Yep. So he comes in here and it says play sit. And it says uh Alright. <laughs> it says okay, play sit. Oh good. If it says play idle O one, it's already playing idle O one, it'll say not nah, try again. And that is where we have a problem. So what we need to do is go to our dwarf prefab. this guy here go to the animation component and turn off play automatically so what does that mean? that means that now he's not going to be playing idle one and that would be a valid option so there you go it's, uh, there we go, it sits down ignore the little jerkiness of the, the loop that guy stood up, that guy stood up, that guy stood up, that guy sat down so that's kind of cool we've seen a bit of uh, action from our guys and as um, more animations get put in there and they have more things to do there'll be more dynamic elements going on you yeah, the guy might be wandering around might have little uh, routines little bits of AI for some guys um, maybe dependent stuff based on I think it'd be, that's the kind of thing I want to do I'm more interested in that sort of stuff than can things so if I put in some you know, object here they might have something related to that where okay I've got that sort of object near me I'll do something related to that um, I'm not really sure what sort of thing that would be at the moment I'm sure we're gonna have I think what I want to do is maybe one of these videos uh, this coming couple of days um, I need to get rid of this blister bolt as well um, we need to start doing stuff like having a pile of of bolts for example it's a pile of, of the ammo type of the weapon because you're going to have multiple um, multiple shots with some of this stuff depending on the level and that sort of thing and I'd like to start putting together piles of weapons piles of ammo so you can see um, how much you got left and then you know as uh, as you shoot another one will be loaded into the weapon whether or not I don't think there'll be an animation involved in that well actually there could be there could be because it could be a reload time although it's not really it's not like a yeah, reload time might be a bit annoying. I think it's probably just going to be an instant thing. Could be, could be kind of cool seeing dwarves, you know, picking up a big boulder and loading it into a, into a catapult or something like that. But um, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll investigate that. But I think I don't want it to take a long time. I want to be able to, you know, you don't want you don't want downtime in a game like this. It's meant to be fast, sort of, you know, shoot. Oh yeah, okay, now I'm ready. But shoot, shoot, shoot. So one shot at a time. But you want to be able to get back to the same weapon. I think straight up and and shoot again. So. Yeah, maybe just just it appears there, which uh, is not as graphically interesting, but is uh, probably certainly more gameplay-wise uh, uh, beneficial. Okay, that's uh, that's going to be the video for this week. No, not this week. I don't do weekly videos. 
um, video for today, for right now. I'll do another one tonight for sure. Probably going to do concentrate. Uh, yeah, now that I've talked about those 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 weapon things, I might actually try and do that um, and figure out a way of, of stacking things up in a pile, either dynamically or I'll do some uh, variations of piles for for different amounts. Um, I'll think think about that and then come up with something cool to do. So, uh, thanks for watching this episode of Every Semicolon. Uh, I really appreciate everyone who's uh, you know commenting on the videos and and in the forums and and uh, you know it's it's been it's been a lot of fun doing this stuff and I'm starting to you know get some feedback and that's cool too I really enjoy that um, you know I'm gonna keep this keep this going definitely gonna finish the game it's all coming together it, it's gonna be a pretty cool game I reckon um, thinking about you know it, it's it's this is a very frustrating um, period of of you know and I, I know this is shared by many game developers out there, you know, hobbyists, indie, indie developers, that sort of thing, looking to do it full time. You know, it's it's frustrating. You have something where you know that you could make great games, and and it'd be fun to uh, to do that full time and, and be able to you know be successful at it, make some money. But getting to the point where you have enough time to build a game is is extremely difficult. These videos really really help me in 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 not procrastinating and, 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 and you're really getting stuff out there and done quickly and, and focusing on the game while I make the game except for these little bits at the end where I just ramble on um, so I, I'm really enjoying this stuff I, I think it's uh, it's a great way of, of, of doing development and, and I hope people are learning from it and enjoying these videos too uh, and I really hope that you know people are looking forward to this game in a way I think it's going to be pretty sweet um, whatever platform it's going to be on, or platforms, uh, I hope people can check it out, and I'll definitely do uh, some later on in the, in the process. You know, obviously deals and stuff for guys watching. Um, you know, give out free copies of the games to to, to uh, loyal viewers and, and people who uh, who help me out um, later on in the process in in, in marketing this stuff. And and, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to doing this and, and more things. I'm actually looking to. I guess you know this every semicolon is a is a brand separate from this game. We haven't named this game yet, for example. So um, but once this game's finished, I'm going to keep this stuff going and 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 do more stuff with it. So yeah, I'm I'm really appreciating appreciating all the uh, support so far, and uh, I'll pump out a little more videos. Um, trying to get many many hours done. Um, I, I'm sure people would appreciate the ability to. Uh, throw more stuff on and hopefully you know some guys have been mentioning that they they are doing work while you know game stuff while uh, putting these videos on in in the background or on a second monitor or something like that and I think that's really that's really the ideal I think that's the way I imagine them being being uh, utilized uh, I re read something like uh, you know Masters of Doom you know the book about uh, id software and, and and John Carmack and John Romero and, and those guys starting up their thing and that sort of inspires me that sort of you know I read that and then I go straight into working um, and or I watch you know the Wolf Eye videos or I watch uh, you know, read read articles on on graphics programming or you know this and that and post mortems and and these things inspire me and they and they push me forward in in development and uh, I'd really love to be able to do that for other people too um, so yep I'm gonna stop rambling um, I will do another video tonight and uh, and and some more tomorrow, um, before and after going to see the Avengers. So, thanks for watching. Um, episode twelve coming soon.